OK, well, you described it as the game of the season so far, which is a bold call because we've had a few, but uh, it had everything. It had wet weather football, it had pressure football, and it had one of those infamous, or not infamous, but famous Collingwood come from behind. Oh, I did, TJ. Uh, 11 lead changes for the game, five lead changes in this last quarter. Uh, what Port couldn't afford to do was just allow goals to happen early, and they kicked two in the first 90 seconds, and that spelt disaster for Port Adelaide. You just got to you know, whack, whack, hit them on the nose nice and early, not give them that confidence and that hope, but side bottom kick one early. And then to Port's credit, they kept coming. But you, we've seen this script before and you just felt like they were going to win and get this, this yeah. game one. So they'd kick seven goals at three-quarter time. They kicked six in the last quarter. But to your point, Port Adelaide didn't wilt. They did come back and yeah. I thought Finlayson was quiet early, but he stood up and had a huge last quarter. Power Pepper, just mm. what he has provided for this team this year has been nothing short of extraordinary. And he had his say on it. That one there from Kane Farrell, who had some ordinary moments in the last quarter, needed to be rushed through for a behind. And... Uh, we've seen what Jamie Elliott has done a couple of times. He kicked two in the last quarter, so there's that one. And then there's this one, Brownie. And he is a clutch performer, and right now he's the hottest small forward in the game. Well, there's players who built their reputations on not only finals, but big home and away games. You think of Wayne Johnston, Wayne Carey did it as well. Luke Hodge in the finals for Hawthorne. Michael Voss, Jake and a Jason Ackermanis. But this guy, I mean, there's better players at Collingwood, but in terms of influence and what he does at this football club and what it does when it counts, he is unbelievable. So last year he did it against Essendon. He also kicked the winner against Carlton and ice in his veins again last night, kicked the winner and gave away a goal like that. But the one towards two minutes to go to put them back in front, this one just a couple of centimetres in, you've got to appreciate what this guy is building. We've wanted to get him on a, a non-injury. I mean, yeah. he has been so good this year and we wanted to see a free range of injury for that man and he's delivering brilliantly. Have we seen a team like Collingwood before? I mean, I know we've had golden eras in recent history with Brisbane, Hawthorne, West Coast Eagles were awesome in their day under Mick, uh, but have we seen a team like Collingwood just th th thrives on comebacks and just has this genuine love for each yeah. other? Well they've got to win a flag don't they in order to be put in the same conversations as the team you've just mentioned and yeah. they went close last year but ultimately they lost those two finals by a kick but in terms of the, the weekly drama they provide, uh, no we haven't no. Not, not the way they've done it now for two full home away seasons. And the way that Braden Maynard built the game up and then the way yeah. that Ken Hinckley responded, I thought, good from, from both. Yeah. And then 47,000 there in the wet last night. That's what you want. And that is great for the game. And I thought both sides delivered on talking a big game, mm. but also delivering it on the field. And there's a lot that Port Adelaide did right last night that they'd f be feeling pretty good about, Lauder. Hey, there's a lot of talk around, you know, last year. Was it, is it a fluke with the way they keep doing it? But now they've won 12 of their last 16 where they've been down at three-quarter time. And what I touch on Scott Pendlebury, you know, late in the game, I just wanted to highlight here with six seconds to go what he does for this team. Jamie Elliott, you go over there. Jack Crisp, I need you down here. I'm going to set myself up here. Uh, he just organised everyone at this point. He was finger pointing like a traffic cop. Mm. He's like a coach out there on this football ground. And then I want to show how they play dead ball situations. So when they get in front with two minutes 54 to go, they don't want the ball to be live. They want the ball to be dead. So they, instead of hacking that ball, I'll just put it at your feet. Let's take that ball out of bounds. So it's nothing sexy about these highlights. I'm just going to act like I couldn't get rid of the ball and I'm just going to take the tackle. So they just keep killing 10 and 15 seconds. So they don't want this ball to spill out. No one will knock it on. No one wants to handball. They just want to get bodies around it. The fine okay. line, though, Lord, of yeah. not getting pinned holding the exactly ball. Exactly right, yeah. but they jump on top of each other. So it's like they've so trained. they trained for that? Yeah, they've trained for it. Yeah. And, they, and I'm sure everyone does, but no one could have trained for it as well as this team does because Markov wouldn't have been doing that for the Gold Coast Suns, yet he comes and does it. Mm. So they killed three minutes by hardly letting the ball leave the air. Phenomenal how they do it. It was drama all night. And there was a heightened uh, sense of drama in the last quarter when Willie Rioli had an exchange with Nathan Murphy. Everyone can make their uh, own minds up as to what they think will happen here. Murphy went to ground. Uh, Rioli, moments uh, later, uh, was able to, to take the ball, have a shot, kick a goal. I'm not convinced he's got anything to worry about. I think if you look at it and slow it down, there's, a, there's an open hand element to it. But at the same time, it is around the head region and it's what the MRO does not like. So I'll 
to totally leave it up to the well, MRO. Murphy's got to be better out. there, doesn't he? Like the, Come the, on, the, Kane the, and Damo. The, the, the exaggeration of that. Lord, I think that's a very soft little yeah, open it, heart. I can't believe you rest. guys are putting it on to Nathan Murphy. But when, he, when, uh, he looked dazed. He we're looked dazed. we're so down. sensitive around head issues and we're so paranoid about that. When you flail down like that after a soft action, I, I think that... Well, why would I, you swing an arm to someone's I, jaw? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's whether the issue. it's open hand or anything, it's why would be, you bother to do be it a reportable, in this It's got to be a reportable offence. I don't think that is a reportable offence. And if he doesn't go down like that and, and get straight up and finish the game, then we're not talking Rochelle about it. Rochelle got this. two weeks. Yeah, that, was a, that was a close fist a punch to the, to the I, fist. I, I think I'd be giving him two weeks. I, I just think you can't. we can't stand for that. And it stuns you. It stuns you when you get hit. But it was an open hand, Lord O. Like on, on the, it was Way well, off, off the ball. Yeah, uh, you elect to hit the head. Yeah. yeah. What's but the difference to a bump on it and a You think fist? that was a reportable offence? Yeah. Well, well, In today's standards, yeah. yeah. But Maybe not two years ago. The only thing that will get him off is the fact that yeah. he wasn't injured. He's been hit to the face yeah. in that situation. Well, a lot of people get brushed to the face. Ah. I think the exaggeration of that contact... We don't uh, want to see that in our game, though. Uh, okay. See what? That action. By Rioli? Yeah. Yes. No, exactly.